Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to World of Tanks with your boy BMAT and today I have a bit of a nail biter with the CS52 Lease, a Polish tier 8 premium vehicle. Um, as you guys can see, I'm using a bit of a <laughs> gold spammy loadout. In my opinion, the, the gold in this tank really is worth it. All in all, this tank is a pretty good, like, pretty good silver grinder. Although, granted, you know, if you're just shooting gold, that's going to limit your silver making capabilities. But, this tank makes it so well that, you know, at the end of this, you know, you'll see it actually make some money, even though I burn a lot of my ammunition. As far as the CS-52 lease itself, it's kind of a mixture between a T-44-100 and a Lance and C. The T-44-100, more so in how it looks, you know, its armor characteristics and all that good stuff. While the Lancet C is more comparable to the gun. I believe it only has 208 millimeters of pen with standard rounds. Check that real quick. Yeah, that's right. And the Lancet C, of course, shares the same. Although, I think the Lancet C has better shell velocity. I'll have to check on that. But anyways, the gun's very similar. And thus, with only 208 millimeters of pen, I feel like with premium ammunition, you have a much better chance of going up against higher tiers. So right here, I mean, you can tell it's a tier 8 match, so I'm really not against super heavily armored tanks, although, I mean, I will find a couple in this match. But as you can see, I'm going all the way to the one line. I think that with the decent turret that this tank has, you know, it has decent gun depression. I believe it has negative 7 degrees. Which, you know, for vehicles like this is kind of unheard of. And, of course, I have a much less chance of facing super heavily armored tanks coming this way. Since this mostly seems to be a medium tank. And, of course, with the T-25-2, the tank destroyer friendly area. Although, I will come across some heavy tanks over here, but we'll get to that. But anyways, of course, I missed a shot right there. But, as you can see, three out of four shots I hit, three out of four I penned. Of course, with the excellent, you know premium ammunition. Of course, I, I feel kind of dirty being a gold spammer. Absolutely no idea where that shot goes. I, that's, yeah. RNG, just telling me no. But of course, this time, I roll up on him. I aim. And I get the kill. So I'm a bad start. You know, I'm 1100 damage. And, uh, as far as, like I said, this seems to be more of a, of a medium friendly area. So like I said, the STA-1, the Type 59, and of course I have the T-44-100 coming up here. That doesn't really surprise me at all. And then now we can see that there's a T-2065 that's camping, you know, the friendly little area in the back. I should have never taken that shot. Even with premium ammunition, the Type 59's turret is really tough. So, if I do manage to get some side shots right here against the T-2065, which, when, when you're in a medium tank, and... There's heavy tanks that are in your area or heavy tanks you have shots on. You should take those shots every single time because heavy tanks, you know, obviously they're meant to tank, you know, they're meant to block, they're meant to, you know, get in, do their damage, you know, in big bursts or in the T2065's case, you know, it's definitely more of a, like a DPM based heavy. But if you can limit the amount of like really strong effective armor that your team has to go up against, it really helps. Now, of course, right there, I should have been a little bit more cautious of the T SDA-1, you know, camping those bushes in the back. Of course, I wasn't able to spot him. He was able to spot me because he had bush cover and I didn't. However, he didn't understand the mechanics as far as pulling back from a bush. Like, for all you people who don't know, if you're sitting behind a bush, when the bush is transparent and you can see through it, you're still camouflaged, but as soon as you pull the trigger, you're going to expose yourself. You're going to give away your position. That's why you need to pull back. Make sure that the bush is no longer transparent. It's a hard kind of... That actually looks like a bush <laughs> at that point. And then you fire. Then you can maintain your concealment. You camouflage. Make the most use of your concealment. So right here, we kind of hit a bit of a lull. I shouldn't have just sat there. Um, like I said before, with the shot I took before, the... Type 59's turret's really tough. So, even with gold ammunition, there's no real way for me to hit and penetrate, especially if I'm hitting like a rounded kind of surface like I did there. 
But right here, we kind of hit a bit of a lull in the fighting. Um, of course, nobody spotted right now. The Leo, of course, is making a hero play. You can see him coming up the three line. And of course, as soon as I say that, that's when the T2065 shows up. Now, with standard ammunition, I might not penetrate. But since I got the gold loaded, and this tank has decent DPM, of course, the T2065 is better DPM, but I'm able to outplay him, punish him for, you know, basically exposing his tank to another tank that has good DPM, and of course, can punish him. Can can take advantage of his mistake. Of course, he's trying to be aggressive. He His tank does have a really tough turret, really good hull down, but he wasn't hull down there. He completely exposed his hull and just gave me an easy kill. So right here, we also have a hero play from this E25 on my right. He's actually come up, you know, he's shooting the Type 59, I imagine in the butt or, you know, in the side armor. Which E25, I think, in the right hands, that tank's an absolute beast. And that guy, of course, has made the most of the Type 59, not necessarily moving. You know, he stayed in that position. He ultimately let the E25 and the Centurion 1 flank him. Of course, the Leo tried to flank him before, but he ended up getting killed, I believe. Yeah, he got killed. And now this flank is pretty much consolidated. We have the STA-1 back there. He's not really trying to make himself too much of a threat because, I mean, for me, premium munitions just overkill. You know, the dude has virtually no armor. And now I see that the enemy team has basically done on the other flank what we've done on this flank, but better because instead of an STA-1 being left, you know, to its own devices on our flank, you know, they don't have anybody on our team on their flank. But right now the score is 9-9. Nine nine. So right here, I make the decision to come back to, you know, try to defend the cap. I am... This isn't necessarily, I'd say, the best position. I mean, I can't really think of one better off the top of my head, but the reason I say that is because you can see, you know, there's multiple buildings between myself and the cap circle. Now, of course, Centurion 1 is making a heroic play down the K-line, and right now this E25, I'm afraid that he's going to come up and he's going to spank the Udes and the Steyr Waffentrager, which I take a shot there and I miss, but, I mean, he's an extremely low-profile target, so it is what it is. So I line up a shot. I don't get it. The uh, GW Panther managed to take him out. But at the same time, the E25 takes out a Steyr of Offentrager. So now I'm in a position where, okay, I need to help this Udez. I need to make sure that the C25 can't flank and spank him. And, you know, we don't ultimately lose a pretty outrageously good tank destroyer, in my opinion in the UDES. UDES has 288 millimeters of pen on their standard ammunition. So, as far as being able to deal with an object 252U, I really don't want to lose him in this position. So right now, we're kind of at a bit of a stalemate. The 252U is in the trench, and of course Centurion 1's going after him. I mean, this dude, absolute hero. You know, shout out to this guy. To uh, Carvac, I guess I don't know if it's car vacuum or what, but uh, so uh, like I said, in this position, there's not much I can really do to help him, and I feel bad that you know I've kind of put myself in the spot, but you know it's what I could do. And right there with the with the fake tank coming in like that, I don't manage to pen him. I manage to hit him around the gun. That is another thing about premium ammo in this tank: the shell velocity is so outrageously good that there's a lot of times you really don't need to lead and right there I led and you guys saw what happened so it is what it is we're gonna move on so the GW Panther manages to take out the 252U that's awesome now the STA-1 makes a play he's coming up he's trying to you know test the UDES you know of course they proxy spotted each other I'm just sitting here because as soon as that dude exposes himself, I'm putting a shot into him, and then maybe the Udez or the Yag Panther down below can finish him off. You know, if you can't, so that's to me that's the importance of like hit points. If you can't get a kill shot, then it's always important, you know, to have multiple layers of fire 
to where as soon as the guy's hit by one guy, you know, maybe one or two other guys can immediately take the shot and potentially kill him right on the spot. So that's that's more of a team thing. <laughs> that's not necessarily like an individual thing. However, individuals do make up, you know, part of a team. So in this case, it was cool to see like the Yag Panther kind of come up. The Udes, of course, is there. Me, I'm ready to go. But right now, I guess what could I do differently right now? So I'm waiting for this fake tank to expose himself. I'm trying to keep eyes on when the E25 and the STA-1 are making a move. And I get like a gut feeling that like something is happening. So my, uh, my gut feeling was right. The STA-1 was trying to flank around the other side because I didn't know if he knew that I was here along with the Udes. Which you might have seen me from when the fake tank came and I took a shot once again through a transparent bush. And right here, I exposed myself a little bit. Uh, man, I just take three hits right there. Two from the E25, a block one, luckily. Now, this STA-1, I guess he can't pen me. <laughs> so he's looking, he's looking, he's looking, he can't pen me. So that's good. That, both of those could have been kill shots. You know, my game could have ended right then and there. Thank God it didn't. But uh, right here, the Udes... I'm trying to, like, lure this STA-1 over the ridge. And, of course, the E-25, he's shooting gold at me, but he's still struggling to pen, which, granted, that tank doesn't necessarily have the greatest pen. It only has a 75mm gun. I think it only does 150 with standard rounds, so premium can't be that much higher. So, this STA-1, he's coming out. Exactly what I wanted to happen. I wanted him to come around. I wanted him to face me. And I wanted the Udes to punish him for it. So, great play to the U Udes. Uh, Swag Tingles. <laughs> what a name. Uh, that guy was the MVP. Unfortunately, I managed to actually take another damaging hit from the E25. Which that leaves me on 34 health. Man. I, I'm, I'm so close to death right here. This isn't, this isn't good. So, and I also take damage from the GW Panther. So, <laughs> I'm really really not in the best of situations right now but right now I, I decide okay I don't want to just sit there and let the E25 keep spotting me every time I try to come out and take a shot it's only him and the GW Panther left so and we only have two and a half minutes left it's time to rock you know, I have a feeling that the E25 is either going to sit there at F1 or he's going to fall back to base. But he's going to have to come from that direction. So I decide, okay, time to move up the sixth line. Um, it's time to get up there, possibly take him out as he's coming back. And then, of course, hunt Artie. Like I said, we're, we're kind of against the clock here. So I'm just scooting on down the trench. And that's another thing about this tank. It, it only does, I believe, 50 kilometers an hour. But the power to weight ratio and the terrain resistance on this tank is pretty good to where you can comfortably get up to your top speed or at least really close to your top speed. I mean, you can see I'm constantly at 48, 49, 50, you know, the whole time I'm moving down here. So not the fastest, but definitely a maneuverable vehicle. So as you can see, we hit the two minute mark. I'm coming up. I'm thinking, okay, I need to prepare for the 25. He's going to be coming from my left. So I'm going to, as soon as I come out of this trench, I'm going to turn to the left. I'm going to, you know, brace for impact because I don't know if he's already up there. The E25 is a very maneuverable machine. If he, like right now, if he's up on that ridge, I'm dead. Okay. But thankfully, I managed to get behind the buildings before he does. So he's either going to have to take a rush shot or he's just not going to be able to see me. Now, of course, I pass the buildings. I'm thinking, okay, okay, this guy has to show up any minute now. He has to come out. It's either that, I mean, of course, I didn't drive through the cap circle because, you know, I didn't want to give my position away, and I was right. The guy came out, he came to face me, I managed to take him out. But now we're less than one minute. <laughs> Time's running down, okay? I'm coming, the Yag Panther's coming, we need to hunt down this GW Panther, there's not enough time to cap. I mean, I kept thinking in my head, okay, if both of us get in the cap circle, maybe, but then... The Yag Panther leaves the cap circle, and I need to follow him. It's all or nothing right now. We need to hunt down this Yag, uh, GW Panther, and we need to take him out. So, of course, I'm driving through the cap. 
For a second, I was wondering if this guy was going to try pushing our cap, but then the Yag Panther manages to spot him. And uh, before I could take the shot, our GW Panther takes out their GW Panther. GG's all around. Absolutely epic matchup in a tank that I think is awesome. If you miss the event to grind this tank, I highly recommend the next time that Wargaming attempts to sell this thing, you need to buy it. It is that good. It, it just is. So, anyways, guys, let's, uh, let's check out the post power results. And as you can see, folks, I did pretty all right. <laughs> not too, not the best, but not the worst in the long shot. I got a second class mastery. I got the hand of God, bruiser, duelist, fire for effect, shell proof, and remarkably a steel wall. And that's probably from when the STA-1 and the E-25 were kind of like peppering me there. And of course, whenever I was originally on the one line, you know, there were some shots that hit me that bounced. As far as the team goes, I am tops on the team. However, I mean, 3,000 damage, that's pretty good. But, I mean, shout out to the Centurion, you know, even though he didn't do the best score, he still went up and made a play when he absolutely had to. Shout out to the Udez. You know, that dude's a G. Like I said, whenever I wanted the ST1 to come out and fight us, the Udez, of course, came out and finished him off, which is exactly what I wanted. Also, shout out to the Yag Panther and shout out to the GW Panther. Those guys are rock stars. Of course, the Object 252U, he did the best on their team. He was a guy that was, you know, hopping all over our cap. The Fake Tank, the E25 I managed to take out. You know, he was a pretty decent player. The ST1, Type 59. The T2065, I'm kind of surprised. He did no damage. So, that's not good in a top tier heavy tank. As far as my personal detailed report, I mean, you get what you get. <laughs> uh, 20 shots fired, 14 hits, 11 pens, 3 3k damage. I mean, like I said, with premium rounds, it certainly makes it easier whenever it's time to you know, especially when you're going up tier, when you're facing tier 9s, tier 10s. You know, it's a lot better to pack a lot of premiums. That way, you know, you actually stand a better chance. Instead of only having 208 millimeters of pen, you get 252. And of course, I still managed to make 13,000 credits. And that's only because I have a premium account. If you didn't have a premium account, I'm looking to forking out almost 20k. So, all in all... um. I managed to step away from this battle or from this game for a while. So, you know, it's cool to step back into it and do pretty well. I mean, it's not all the time that, I mean, there's times where I kind of fall out of love with games. I mean, not is I never hated world of tanks, you know, it's not that kind of thing, but you know, there's times where other games kind of grab your attention. You know, for me, that was, I let loose for a while. So, I mean, like I said, I'll have more World of Tanks videos coming out here soon. But, all in all, we'll see how it goes. But, uh, anyways, guys, I thank you all for watching. If you guys like what you saw, please hit the like button. You know, maybe subscribe, hit the notification bell. It really helps out the channel. And, uh, anyways, take care. I'll see you guys next time.